Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. Campaign Tales. Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. Where we're talking the campaign tales. And if you can see, we brought our monolith back. Because in this episode... We eventually reach our monolith after traveling uh, through some various countryside. So Right. So we'll start with... It's the first of Varen's Moon. Yeah. And... They're heading south. Yeah, and we're coming, we're kind of leapfrogging through these fortified villages. Or little villages. Some little are, villages. Most of them aren't fortified, but they're headed to one that is, yeah. which is back in their own land of uh, Wormgard. Yeah. Which is named uh, Drumgen Steadfast. Steadfast. And it's in, it's a Wormgard village, so... It's right on the border of Hollystaff lands, yeah. and it's, it's a fairly large walled town. Yeah, um, Wormgard, of course, is our clan area our you know our general group or clan area right two of the party are actually holly staff but yeah everyone else in the party is from warm guard yeah we're worm guardians i guess you could say right so that night before we reach the village you run into a group of hunters who are from intrusion steadfast and it when as soon as we meet them they recognize rolf as being the son of invernia right they know it <laughs> in their bones who yeah. he is yeah. and they're they they're, freaked out. They freaked out. I mean, they're they're prostrating themselves. They're, you know, calling him, you know, by yeah, honorifics, yeah. and he he doesn't know what and to do. Have your mother stop this winter? Yeah, please, you know, please, we we beseech you, son of Invernia, you know, bring back the sun, bring back the crops. We're we're starving. That sort of thing. Right, and their witch Addie is feeding the fire. She stokes the she stokes the superstition. Yeah. She stokes the belief and. We're not sure why. We're not sure as a group why she's doing it, yeah. but it, it's working out to the point where uh, it's really it's really harming us because uh, we can't we can't gain this reputation right. of being um, you know a group of travelers like that that have a godlet you know with a us demigod. a demigod with us you know this just isn't going to work. Everywhere we go, people are, you know it's going to cause a lot of controversy. So we're a little bit upset about that. Yeah. And it becomes even worse the next day when we travel it actually to the village. And Addie tries to convince Rolf to take advantage of his status and essentially take control of the village. Yeah, and she actually convinces him to do so. Yeah. And uh, it uh, tries to get into his mind. And then we begin to realize that Addie has some kind of a hidden agenda. And that, that's not <laughs> very good. Right. And uh, we become really suspicious of what's going on. But somehow through our diplomatic skills and some convincing, we managed to convince the people in the village that Rolf is okay. Right. That he's now, not to be feared. Now, they still have to deal with him that he is... He's an outcast. He's totally an outcast. Remember, he's a Worm Guardian outcast. Yeah. Because he wasn't able to complete his ritual properly. And right. his father out... His, you know... His, his, his father. His father. Who's a Jarl. Yeah. Who's a small, a, a small lower-level Jarl basically banishes him. And uh, and then the High Jarl follows through and says, yeah. you know, we can't kill you and we're not going to deny you uh, food or, or shelter, but you're not going to get what everyone else gets. You're yeah. you're basically scum of the earth. Yeah, you won't have interaction. You're not our enemy, but you're almost our enemy. Yeah, you won't have interaction with people. They won't trade with you. They won't socially interact. Uh, you know, we can't outright kill you. We can't you know, imprison you, but it would be best if you left town. Right. You know, they ask him to just leave. Right. And of course, because we're leaving as a group, we all take him with us anyway, so it works out. However, this village, you know, they're aware of what's going on. And, uh, you know, he's looked at askance. Yeah. And during his entire time there in the village, they kind of eyeball him, you know, out of the corner of their eyes. Like, what's this guy going to do? And, yeah, the Jarl came down and he was proclamation about this guy. And not only that, but he's the son of Invernia. And Invernia is starving us to death. What's going on here, you know? Yeah. And 
And a few can't people go against our yarn, but we can't go against the goddess yeah, of winter. Exactly, you know, and a few people are kind of eyeballing the witch, like, what's going on with the witch? What's this agenda? Right. You know. Now so. they've noticed too that the, the tundra is all dirty, the snow is all dirty. Yeah. And they're starting to figure out that are the giants causing the volcanoes to cause this endless winter? Now, in real life history, there were times in 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 our own history what volcanoes caused many ice ages well sure i mean okay so uh krakatoa you know krakatoa erupts uh causes the uh the summer without you know the the, the summer without uh, a sun uh before that uh there's been i know several icelandic volcanoes mm -hmm. that have erupted and and really affected northern europe and brought on some it, it some people mm -hmm. even bring on believe that an eruption of the icelandic volcano brought on the dark ages that brought on mm -hmm. the great famines that swept over europe you know the year without a sun and uh, mm -hmm. times like that and and in our time period even mount pentubo when it exploded in the philippines mm -hmm. uh, dropped earth's temperature by one degree which was really significant mount st helens yeah and of course mount st helens created almost like the conditions that you would call a nuclear winter with the amount of ash thrown up in the air and of course you know those of us who live in the upper wind midwest at that time well we remember the ash coming down right and so the sun you know blocking being blocked by the ash right so kind of a real world issue that's going on in in this this world yeah. so here they are in drums and steadfast and the witch is trying to manipulate yeah and rolf follows along but then rolf decides he doesn't like this yeah. he comes to his own mind and he he tells her he says don't you ever yeah ever make me do that again yeah get out of my mind you know that's the whole thing mm -hmm. is she tries to manipulate him into doing something and it, it upsets him terribly because rolf's rolf's general personality is not like that he's no. not a manipulator you know he's a helper and, and it's true that he is not the best guy to have around because he's a, he's antisocial. He's he's anti-violent. Yeah, he doesn't. He's like violence. grumpy and things like that. But you know he is anti-violence. He's not the kind of guy who's going to cause a lot of issues. Uh, you know, and he's not the best warrior. But you know he's very intelligent and he's he's one of our. He's group. got his use. Yeah, he's, he's many uses. He can heal and yeah. he can do other and things. And he is and part of our group, part of our family. And he becomes extremely upset. At, at Adam Adamir's what she's doing trying to manipulate him and he t he tells Adamir flat out get out of my head yeah don't you ever know? do that again and so several of us in the group are trying to figure out why in the world Adamir's doing this and we it won't become clear until much later right why Adamir's doing this why the witch is doing this right. but right now we're just sort of like hmm I wonder why this is happening what's going on hmm seems odd yeah yeah so the yeah. party couple of them buy some more arrows because they're getting low on arrows from yeah. hunting and fighting and yeah. the arrows aren't endless you know they they do lose arrows or break arrows yeah my character Maud, who's essentially a archer archer fighter buys 50 arrows and berger buys 50 arrows right and they're actually pretty cheap i mean we don't pay that much for them uh you know we're able to and because we have a sled being pulled by sophie our bear they can uh, stockpile, we can stockpile big bundles of arrows on the sled and of course, later on, it'll come to pass when uh, the sled has some experience in this <laughs> that we end up losing a lot of our extra arrows. Right. Uh, but that's that's for the future. Yeah. So, so Dermot Steadfast, you know, basically gives them a, a small feast of mead, meat, and yep. and then they buy a couple more tents to help protect mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So because our camps are getting kind of rough, it's still cold, very cold at yeah. night. Winds blowing, snows are increasing, so we need shelter. Right. And it's not easy for us to take care of each other in this. You know, we were rough camping before, but it, it's getting harder and harder to maintain because right. the weather's so cold. And every every night within the, the game, the party has a choice of what each one wants to do. Whether you want to hunt or help hunt, or you want to collect uh, the materials to, to brew a potion... Mm -hmm and try to brew the potion now that's one of the exceptions the person brewing the potion can actually do three different things yeah because it's all related into the same thing they just have to make three checks building a fire and setting up tents and it's not easy so they have to work as a team to assist each other setting up tents and building fire and yeah. collecting wood for the fire or, yeah. or materials to burn for the fire and getting food to eat 
So, you know, it's it's kind of tricky for him. Yeah, it's quite the chore. You know, it's a survival check. Right. And it's quite a survival. This is a harsh land. Cold, snowy. Uh, it's animals like, are, are vacating. Yeah, the animals are leaving or they're dying or they're starving. Yeah. So uh, they're digging up what they can of plants yeah. that are frozen in the ground or, or trees or bark or it's, it's, any, it's, any edibles that they can come across. It's little like, bits of food, squirrels and birds. and Yeah, it's like the Siberian taiga. I mean, if you imagine what that's like, which is why the Russians put mm -hmm. gulag camps <laughs> up there mm -hmm. because there's nothing there. You can't escape. Yeah. So, so on the on the third of uh, Varen's moon, they decide to head south again yep. towards the standing. So, well, it's actually kind of south east again, back yeah, into Hollystaff lands. Yeah, and there's a little village that they know about called Pine Ard. Yeah, which basically means Pine Village. Yeah, that they decide to avoid. I that way, even... they didn't want to you know cause any more issue with with Rolf yeah. and Addy and. And uh, yeah, and they just thought it'd be best to avoid it this time. I wouldn't even call it a village. It's more like a hamlet. Yeah, if you want to call it, it's just a group of huts, kind of around a central little area yeah. where there's a fire and stuff like that. A group, hunters live there. You know, and, you know, subsistence only about people. twenty-five to fifty people. Yeah, at but most. but we don't even want to experience no. what happened before with Addie trying to manipulate. Um, Rolf, and we want to tr completely avoid it, so we don't actually have to go into the village. We have enough food, we have enough resources, we can go around it, and we decided to just go around the village and head directly and to the standing head directly stones. to the standing stones. Right. So on the sixth, they actually reach the standing stones, and when they get there, they actually find they can see a hole, yeah, dug into the standing stones. That's and covered in snow. You can see that right there. I mean, right. there's someone's been digging, someone's been working their way. Uh, into the stone, and uh, when we get there, uh, we have a welcome party, and it's they—they they are not very welcome. Right. So with that, we're going to end this episode of Campaign Tales: Wizards of the Tower Role Play. May all your adventures be epic, and keep on rolling. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, folks. And with that, we'll actually end this episode of yep. Campaign Tales. So thank you for watching Wizards of the Tower.